Some choose to walk in the light of God's teaching, while others choose to walk in the darkness of the world. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. Are you walking in the light or in the darkness? In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in Search of the Lord's Way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search the Scriptures for God's will. People feel free to walk any way they like, but our paths take us in different directions. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. We want you to find life by taking the narrow way, the Lord's way. Studying the Scriptures will keep you from straying from God's will, and that's why we focus our thoughts on the Bible. Thanks for taking time with us today. We want to be a part of your life each week. When we become Christians, God leads us out of darkness into light. People who walk in darkness cannot see clearly and never know what dangers are lurking. Spiritual darkness not only affects our lives, it also affects our souls. Christ is calling us out of darkness into His marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 verses 9 to 10 speaks to Christians, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Because they followed Jesus, Christians are God's people who have received mercy. Paul described the church in Ephesians 5 and verse 8, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Because of Jesus, we don't have to walk in darkness. We can walk in the light. Now, we offer this study free on light and darkness. And if you'd like a printed copy or a CD of our study, and you live in the United States, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way. Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number, and that number is 1-800-321-8633. We also have materials free on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Colossians 1, 9 through 14, and then we'll explore what it means to walk in darkness and then to come to the light.
Our reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. And here in this passage, Paul makes it very clear of the beauty and the wonder of what it means to be a child of the light. Let's read together. For this reason also, since the day that we heard of it, we've not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. For He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That's an important reading from the book of Colossians. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we're grateful for Your Word that gives us hope and leads us to a joyful life of love and of purity. Give us strength, Father, to love You always. And may Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes people who once followed the Lord take a detour and they follow the wrong path into sin. The scriptures reveal several instances of otherwise faithful men who were tempted and took a walk in the darkness, leaving the narrow path and falling to temptation. We want to look at some of those who took a walk in sin but later came home. First is David. Now David was a man after God's own heart. He wrote nearly half of the book of Psalms and was the model of loyalty to God for all the kings of Judah. Yet he committed adultery with Bathsheba and caused the death of her husband Uriah. 2 Samuel chapter 11 tells of David's temptation. He saw Bathsheba when she was bathing and he lusted for her. David called for her, slept with her, and caused her to become pregnant with child. He committed adultery a sin that was punishable by death. But in order to cover up his sin, he called for the mighty man Uriah the Hittite to come home to his wife. But Uriah did not go home. As an honorable soldier, he slept at the king's door. David got Uriah drunk, thinking he might go home. 
but Uriah didn't. David then arranged for Uriah to be killed in battle so he could marry his pregnant widow. Well, this thing that David had done displeased the Lord. 2 Samuel 11 and verse 27. Because David sinned against God, he felt a heavy burden of guilt. David tried to conceal his sin, and that only made things worse. The Lord sent the prophet Nathan to David to rebuke him. And Nathan revealed to David the story of a powerful rich man who selfishly stole the only ewe lamb belonging to his poor neighbor to feed a guest. Well, the lamb was precious and like a daughter to this poor man. Well, David became angry and said that the rich man deserves to die. And then Nathan said to David, You are the man. David was rich and had several wives, yet he stole the only wife of his neighbor. Perhaps like David, you've realized that you're the kind of person who could commit some terrible sin against God. David left the light and decided to take a selfish walk in the darkness. Thankfully, David confessed his sins and God forgave him. In Psalm 51, David reveals the pain that he endured because of his sin. He spoke about his need for mercy to blot out his transgressions. He knew how badly he needed washing and cleansing from sin. And his sins were ever before him. His guilt was like having broken bones. And he cried out in Psalm 51, verses 10 to 12, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. David sinned against God, and the momentary pleasures of sin never last. And David suffered greatly for his walk in the dark. The Lord Jesus tells the story of a younger brother who grew up in a godly home but decided to leave home and live as he pleased. Well, the Lord Jesus tells this parable in Luke 15, verses 11 to 24. A man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together. He went on a journey into a distant country, and there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I'm dying here with hunger? I'll get up and I'll go to my father and I'll, I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him. And he ran and he embraced him and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a, a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let's, let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. They began to celebrate. Because of his choice to walk in sin, this young man became destitute. Sin cost him everything. He wasted his inheritance. He gave up his self-respect. He lost his ability to make a living and eat. He had no friends and no kinfolk in that far country. Friend, are you in a far country? 
Are the sinful habits of your life costing you your self-respect and a clear conscience? Do you need a reset button and to come to your senses? The prodigal son finally recognized his sinful ways. And this honesty is the first step to healing. His sin shamed him to the point that he no longer felt worthy to be the father's son. Now when people see the great harm of sin and they begin to grieve over it, they find the courage and strength to leave it. Thankfully, this younger brother repented and came home to his father. Luke tells of the Apostle Peter's fall to temptation. You remember the Lord Jesus said in Luke 22, verses 31 to 32, He said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter responded, Lord, I, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And on the Mount of Olives, Peter boasted, Well, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Oh, I'm reminded of Paul's warning in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. Jesus had predicted in Matthew 26, 34, Truly I say to you, that this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Well, Jesus' prophecy proved true. And Peter, even with the best of intentions, fell to temptation. Matthew 26, 69 to 75 says, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. When he had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. A little later the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows you will deny me three times. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. Matthew, Mark, and Luke record Peter's denial of Jesus. Thankfully, Peter did turn and come back to the Lord. Though he denied knowing the Lord Jesus at the trial, he stood with the eleven and boldly preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost just 50 days later. Now Jesus didn't cast Peter out and have no use for him. In John 21, when Jesus asked Peter three times whether he loved him, Peter affirmed his love. And Jesus told him to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Repentance ceases from sin, yes, but it also gets busy doing the work of the Lord. You may have at some time in your life taken a walk in the darkness. Well, I want you to know there's hope for you if you'll come back to the Lord and you'll serve Him. Jesus said that He prayed for Peter. And Jesus, you know what, is praying for you to turn from sin and live in righteousness. The Lord didn't give up on Peter, and He won't give up on you. Don't give up on Him or on yourself. There is a constant battle going on in this world between good and evil between righteousness and sin, between light and darkness. The Apostle John told the church in 1 John 5 and verse 19, We know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. I tell you, it matters whether we follow the Lord Jesus or whether we follow the world. The Lord Jesus Himself, as you remember, said in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, 
enter through the narrow gate, for the, the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And then he said, and there are many who enter through it. And then he said, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Those who follow the crowds of the world will be lost, while those who take the narrow path in following Jesus will enter into life. Now the reason that we preach the gospel is so that everyone may find the truth and be saved by the Lord. God chose the method of preaching and the message preached in the gospel to reach out to people in darkness and to bring them to the light. Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Lord Jesus chose Saul of Tarsus, that is the Apostle Paul, to be a minister and a witness. The Lord said in Acts 26 and verse 18 that He sent Him to the Gentiles to, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. Paul reminded the church at Colossae what God had done for them in Colossians 1, 13 and 14, when Paul said, For He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Folks, we, we don't need to go back into the darkness, back into sin, or back into confusion and misunderstanding. We need to come to the Lord and to His Word and to serve Him always. Paul urged the Romans in Romans 13, verses 11 to 14, Do this, knowing the time, that it's already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. The night is almost gone, and the day is near. Therefore let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. That is what we must do. Leave the darkness and come to the light. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, help us to love you from pure hearts, to follow your will always, to love what is true and good, and to leave out and to leave the things that will hurt and harm us, things of this world and sin. Father, we love you, and we love your Son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. The Lord Jesus said in John 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world, but he desires his followers to show that same light of life. You remember the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16 that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let me ask you, do, do people see you as a light for Jesus? 
The world exists in spiritual darkness and desperately needs the light. They need Christ's love, His teaching, His grace, and His hope. You can't show the light of Christ if you walk in darkness and live in sin. You can't lead people to Christ if you aren't following Him. Repent, and God will forgive and heal you. Repentance is a great gift. It means you can start over clean. Jesus preached repentance because repentance brings healing to lost souls. Begin your journey with Jesus. Place your trust in Him, in what He has done for you on the cross, and in what He teaches. Trust means giving your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus. And when you give your life to Him, you'll start to, to live as He teaches, and you'll give up the old sins. You see, that's repentance. Trust in Christ means confessing Jesus as the Son of God. Trust in Christ means obeying the Lord in baptism. You'll be immersed in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Oh, won't you obey the Lord today? Well, we hope that today's study about walking in darkness has opened your heart to follow Christ. If you live in the United States and want a free printed copy or CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll-free at one 800 321-8633. Now you can download these lessons or a newsletter online at our website, searchtv.org. There's also a schedule of our programs and a map with the location of churches of Christ in your area. You can watch Search anytime on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Search TV Ministry. We also offer free Bible correspondence courses. But don't worry, if you get a hold of us, we're not here to get your money. We're here to help you to learn the truth and to get to heaven. Do get involved with the Church of Christ. And if you're looking for a healthy biblical church home, we'll be happy to help you find one. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend about this program. God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.